Okay, so uh, what is the power at the load going to be? Current at the load times the voltage at the load. And what is the input power going to be? So this is the power that we're supplying to the input of the amplifier. Uh, now, for our purposes, um, this the source this hundred kilo ohm resistance is internal to the source, so the source is um, using up some of its own power in that hundred kilo ohm resistor. I don't care about that for the amplifier, so I only care about the power going into the input of the amplifier, and that would be. VI1 times II. Okay, so this is also AV0. Uh, times AI. And this is going to be even larger. And if I convert this to dB, remember for power, I'm doing 10 times the log of my power gain. So this is 98 dB. Okay, so we figured out uh, with this three-stage cascaded amplifier, we figured out the voltage gain that was greater than 700, so we met the requirement that we had. We figured out the current gain, and we figured out the power gain. Uh, but we are using three amplifiers, and it seems like we already met the spec, right? We, we have over 700 uh, voltage gain. So we could make, we could potentially, if this was a device that you wanted to manufacture. You could potentially make it cheaper by getting rid of some of these amplifiers and still trying to meet the specification. Okay, so... Uh, oh, sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. Okay, let's stick to the, the three-stage amplifier. Okay, now if I wanted to redraw this circuit, this circuit has three... Uh, separate amplifier models. So if I wanted to simplify this, I can redraw this and lump all of these three voltage amplifier models into one new voltage amplifier model. Okay, so how would I do that? Here's my source. Here's my load. Those are going to stay the same. And then, if I'm making these three stages, these three stages are going to go and be represented by one voltage amplifier model. So here's my voltage amplifier model. Okay, so this new voltage amplifier model that I drew here represents the combination of those three amplifiers that are cascaded. What's the value of Ri going to be? So Ri is the input resistance into the combination of these three amplifiers. It will be the current divided by the voltage, but what's give me a numerical value? Is it going to be one mega ohm, hundred kilo ohms, 
10 kilo ohms or a combination of the three. What resistance does my source see? When I connect my source up to the amplifier. My source is connected directly to this one mega ohm resistance. And that's all it's going to see. Because this is a circuit. This is a circuit right here. It's, it's not connected to anything else. Everything else uh, to the right of that doesn't matter. So the input resistance of my three amplifiers, even though if I looked at, say, the second stage amplifier by itself, this amplifier by itself has an input resistance of 100 kilo ohms. It doesn't matter. I only see the input resistance of the first amplifier that I'm connecting to the source. Okay, so my, my, my new voltage amplifier model that models all three of these cascaded has an input resistance. That's the same as the input resistance of the first stage. Okay, how about output resistance? It's the same uh, kind of argument. My load is connected only to the output of the uh, third stage. This is a circuit right here, but it's not uh, dependent or not connected to these other circuits here. So my load only sees the output resistance of this stage that's connected to it. So this new model that's modeling all those three stages has an output resistance that's the same as the output resistance of the third stage. Okay, how about the value of this dependent source here? This input voltage will still be VI1. So this value of the dependent source is now going to be the gain of the combination, the cascade combination of all three amplifiers. And Uh, this is a little bit different from what we did previously, but AV01 is 9.9. .9. That's the same as what we had previously. AV02 is 90.9. .9. That's the same as the calculation that we did before. Um, but AV03, it shouldn't include the load resistance, right? It's and this this quantity is assuming that you don't know the load resistance. So this one is only equal to 1. So this comes out to 900. That's why the number is going to be slightly different from what we looked at before. Okay, so the value of this dependent source is going to be 900 times uh, VI1. And now this model, it's a single voltage amplifier, but it represents the cascaded combination of those three amplifiers. Okay, now let's look uh, again at the, the three-stage circuit. And we already met our, our gain specification, our voltage gain of 700. We had 744 or something like that. So we're above specification. So let's see if we can get rid of one of these amplifiers and still meet the specification because that would make our final product cheaper. And one stage that we might want to eliminate would be the third stage, the output stage, because the gain of that stage is only one. Right? This dependent source uh, doesn't have any any uh, amplification here. Whatever I have at the input VI3 is the same as what I have across this dependent source. So it's not providing me any gain, so maybe I can get rid of that stage. 
Okay, so let's look at uh, what the voltage gain will be without the output stage. So we'll do the voltage gain uh, through stage one. That is VI2 over VI1. And we already did this calculation before. Um, this is 100 kilo ohms over 100 kilo ohms plus 1 kilo ohm multiplied by the gain of the dependent source, which is 10. So that's 9.9. .9. We already did uh, the gain of the second stage before, but we'll do it again. This is VL divided by VI2, which is 100 ohms over 100 ohms plus 1 kilo ohm and multiply by the gain factor of the dependent source, which is 100. Okay, so when we did this calculation before, uh, the, the output of the second stage wasn't connected to a 100 ohm load resistor, it was connected to a higher input resistance uh, of our third stage. So. In that case, we got a gain of, of about 90. Now we're getting a gain of about 9 because the output resistance of my second stage is kind of high and my low resistance is kind of low. So that means if I look at total voltage gain that I'm getting, the voltage at the low divided by the voltage to the input of my amplifier, that is AV1 times AV2. That's 90. And if I look at the voltage of my load related to the source voltage, that's uh, AV0 times... Uh, I need to relate VI1 to VS. So I can do that using a voltage divider and that means that the voltage on my load is only about 82 times the voltage at the source VS so I took out the output stage, which only had a gain of 1, but now I lowered my total gain of my cascaded amplifier to only 82. It used to be 700 something. But my output stage only had a gain of 1. So how come it's having such a big effect on uh, the performance of the amplifier? What, what was the output stage doing? It wasn't providing gain, because the gain was only one. Uh, so the output stage does form a voltage divider with the load, um, but so does the output of, of any of these voltage amplifiers because that's just uh, the way that the, the model is. But, so what is special about the voltage divider with the load with the third stage? Hmm? Uh, which resistance value? Let's go, let's go back and look at the third stage. Here's the third stage. So specifically, what about the third stage was good? What resistance? There's a lot of resistors in here. What's the name of this resistor? What 
what's, in, what's the name of this resistance? There's a name for it. It's the resistance at the output of the amplifier. Output resistance. So the output resistance of the third stage was very low, so it allowed us to match uh, well to the load resistance. This is 100 ohms is a relatively low uh, load resistance, but our output resistance was even lower. So we're transferring most of the output of our amplifier to the load. Even though there was no gain here, the gain was one, it still played an important role because of that. Because if you look at the second stage, the second stage has a, a large gain. This term here is 100. But its output resistance is really high. So if you make a voltage divider between the output resistance of the second stage and your load, you're not going to get a lot of voltage transferred to the load. Okay, so the output stage... As a low output resistance. So this matches our amplifier to our load. Okay, so, so far, we've looked at modeling, uh, using these amplifier models, and now we know how to combine them if we want to make cascaded amplifiers to uh, allow us to meet certain specifications that we can't with a single amplifier. Uh, now what we want to look at is how the amplifier is going, the output is going to change as a function of frequency. So, so far we've just assumed that all frequencies are going to um, behave equally or the same through this amplifier model. But that's not the case in a real amplifier. Okay, so let's look at this example. So let's say that I have an amplifier um, and my input is uh, some microphone and my output is going to be uh, the speaker uh, of a mobile phone. So I want my output to accurately reproduce whatever I have on my input. And uh, when you're talking or let's say you're playing music or something, the signal is going to be a sum of a lot of different uh, sinusoidal signals. And so you want the output to be the sum of the same uh, signals with the same frequency components, you just want the amplitude to be larger. So we can simplify this to this problem where I have uh, some input uh, sinusoid and my output is going to be a sinusoid of the same frequency with a different amplitude, a larger amplitude. I can add phase to it, but I, I don't want to change the frequency. And that's the, the goal of our, our linear amplifier. So we can define this system using a transfer function. And the magnitude of that transfer function will be equal to the, the amplitude of the voltages. And then I have a phase of my transfer function, uh, which is going to be the phase that I add uh, to the output signal, if any. And so if we look at a typical amplifier, this is what your uh, output versus frequency is going to look like. Uh, and there, these are on log scales. So this is the, the magnitude of that voltage transfer function. There's going to be some range, some range of frequencies over which your amplifier has a, a constant gain. That's where you want to, your amplifier to operate. Because whatever signal you put through it, you want it to have the same amount of gain, 
no matter what the frequency. But usually as you go to very low frequencies, that gain is going to start dropping off. That's this part of the curve. And if you go to very high frequencies, that gain can also drop off. So that's this part of the curve. Um, within the region where we have constant gain, once we start, the gain starts lowering by 3 dB, then we call those the, the 3 dB frequencies. And between the two 3 dB frequencies, here's one here. So this is a 3 dB frequency. And here's my other 3 dB frequency. Uh, the span of frequencies between the 3 dB frequencies is our 3 dB bandwidth. And this should be familiar from 213. Um, anyone remember why we choose 3 dB? What's magical about 3 dB? These, these are your breakpoints, right, in, in the Bode plots. What's the, what's the value of 3 dB? Fifteen percent? Uh, not quite fifteen percent. Fifty? Fifty percent of what? Fifty percent of the original power. Yeah. So three dB by itself, if you calculate it, it comes out to one over root two. So it's seventy percent of the original voltage. Not fifty percent, but if you look at power now and not voltage, and if you go 3 dB less than the original power, that's 50%. Okay, so these 3 dB points are, are where your signal, outside of that, your signal is only half as powerful as what it was um, at this constant gain level. Okay, so if I have this circuit, is this a low-pass circuit or a high-pass circuit? This is a low-pass circuit. So if you look at your Bode plots, top one is the magnitude, bottom one is the phase. So I have uh, some 3D point. Uh, below that, I'm, I'm passing my signal. As I go above that 3DB point, my gain is starting to drop off at 20 dB per decade. And the transfer function of your signal looks like this. Uh, here's the magnitude and phase. And this should all be review. So I'm not going to go through this. Um, if I take the same circuit, the same RC circuit, and I just uh, exchange the R and the C, oh, the equation for 3 dB frequency. I exchange the R and the C, and now this circuit becomes low pass or high pass. Previous one was low pass. So it must be high pass, right? So these are your Bode plots for magnitude and phase, the equation of the transfer function. And the 3 dB frequency has the same equation. Okay, so let's apply this now to our amplifier circuit models to figure out what their frequency response is. Okay, so here is my here's my source. And I have Uh, some amplifier here, and oops, here. There are some capacitors here for coupling, and then I have my load. Okay, so I want to know if I can use this amplifier as an audio amplifier. So there, there's a couple of things I need to know to figure that out. One is I need to know what's the range of frequencies for audio, because I want to know what range this amplifier needs to have a constant gain over. And so that's about 20 hertz to about 20 kilohertz. So I want to, this is my 3 dB bandwidth. 
because I want to have constant gain over that range of frequencies. That's the audio frequencies. So I want to find out where my 3 dB frequencies are for this amplifier so I can figure out its 3 dB bandwidth and see if it matches up to that range of audio frequencies. Okay, so we will break this down into parts. So let's look at um, the transfer function at the input side of the circuit. Okay, so we're looking here, and I want to find the transfer function at the input. So that's going to be VI divided by VS. So what is that going to be? Or you can also look at it as, is this a low-pass circuit or a high-pass circuit? This is a low pass, and so my transfer function is a low pass RC circuit. So, from the previous slides, that's my transfer function, and my 3 dB frequency is going to be 1 over 2 pi times tau and tau is RC, so R1 times C1. And if I plug in those values that are in there, then this comes out to about 16 kilohertz. Okay, so it's a low pass circuit with a break frequency of 16 kilohertz. Now we'll look at the output side. Um, so to look at the output side, um, the first thing I did was a source transformation here. So I could uh, move where resistor R2 was. So now R2 is uh, in series with R3 and C2. So if I do that, now is this a high pass circuit or a low pass circuit? This is a high pass. And so my transfer function, which is the voltage, the output, uh, divided by, uh, I shouldn't call this VI, let's call this VX. So that's going to be, my voltage polarity is flipped, so negative GM. I have VI in there, sorry. Let's call this VI then. Negative GM uh, R2 multiplied by this impedance divider. So R3 over R2 plus R3 plus 1 over SC2. And what's my 3 dB frequency going to be? 1 over 2 pi times tau. What's tau? In terms of R and C. I don't have only one R. R2 plus R3 times C2. And that comes out to 53 hertz. Okay, so we'll finish this up in the next class, but in the meantime, think about whether or not this is a good audio amplifier based upon the, what we found right here.